One of the things you might have to deal with, depending on the type of transmission that you're going to run behind your engine, is bell housing alignment. Um, it depends on whether you're running an automatic or a manual transmission or which type of transmission that you're going to run. The opening in the bell housing where the transmission mounts to it, assuming that it's a removable bell housing, um, that opening has to be in line with the center line of the crankshaft within a, a, a relatively small tolerance. Now, factory transmissions are very tolerant of imperfections. Uh, they're designed with large tolerances because they're designed for mass production. But if you're going to work with higher quality um, components with more precision, then you might run into a situation where you do have to make some adjustment. So um, over here I've got a C4 automatic transmission. Let me shed some light on it here. That's a C4 uh, three-speed automatic, very common uh, in small block Ford applications. The C4 bell housing is actually removable from the transmission, uh, but alignment on this type of bell housing is really not important at all. The torque co converter uh, is very tolerant to a little bit of misalignment, and the flex plate where the torque converter mounts to the flex plate, the, the bolt holes themselves, have quite a bit of play to them. So it's not necessary to make it precise and it's very tolerant uh, if it's not precise. My 289 in a previous life had a top loader transmission. You can see it there. <clears throat> four speed top loader manual and here's the bell housing for it and uh, even with this setup the and and just for visual what I'm talking about is this opening here how well this align this opening is aligned with the center line of the crankshaft the top loader is very tolerant to misalignment as well uh, certainly not as much as an automatic transmission would be, but it doesn't need to be perfect. You can take that bell housing, bolt it on the block, bolt the transmission to it, and it'll work, it'll work just fine with um, no real concerns. Now on my 289, I have a QuickTime uh, scatter shield. It's SFI rated, and it's designed so that I can take my early Ford block my 5 bolt 289 and attach a modern transmission to it. Now this will allow me to bolt up a number of transmissions the um, T5, the uh, 3350 or 60 whatever it is and and the transmission that I have which is the TKX. I have a brand new Tremec TKX transmission. <clears throat> now the alignment of the bell housing is accomplished with two dowel pins. There's one on this side and then the other here. Those dowel pins are mounted in the back of the block. The bell housing slides on the dowel pins and then you tighten down all the bolts to hold it in place. Now, in order to check the alignment, what I've done is I've taken a dial indicator and actually, let me get my light again. Sorry for the shakiness. And inside I've got my dial indicator and it's mounted directly to the flywheel. And then that allows me to put the dial indicator right into the opening for the transmission. Now I've put tape around the edges. Some people write directly on the bell housing with uh, paint markers. Um, I prefer to use tape. It's just my preference. And what you're trying to do is get the dial indicator so that it rides on this surface all the way around. So you've got to mount it so that it won't contact anything and so that it's very well supported and, and, and the reading won't change as it rotates. So it takes a little bit of uh, setup to get it right. And then 
Um, all I did was pick a starting point. It's marked here with zero. Uh, now I'm working alone so I don't have somebody to rotate the engine for me. So what I did was I rotated the engine about every 45 degrees and made a mark. So I, I started here um, and, I, and I wrote numbers now. Now the numbers, if you can see them, have either, either a plus or a minus in front of them. Um, if it's a minus, the minus indicates that the tip of the dial indicator is moving out. It's extending. That's a minus measurement. And if it's a plus measurement, it means that the plunger is moving towards the indicator. That's a plus measurement. And so at the first 45 degree mark, it's a minus 0 .006. That means the plunger extended six thousandths of an inch. Um, then over here, uh, four thousandths of an inch. And then the plunger started to push in. So over here, we're at three thousandths. Uh, 13 thousandths here, 19 thousandths here, 19 thousandths here, 12 thousandths here, and then back to zero. Now it's real important to test this when you first set it up to make sure that every time you rotate it around, when you get back to zero, the dial indicator actually goes back to zero. It'll take a little bit of playing with it to get it right if you used a dial indicator before you know what I'm talking about. And so, um, I, I did this several times and came up with, with very consistent numbers. So now um, I had my uh, highest negative readings over here. I had six here and four here. Um, so I wanted to know, it went from zero to six and then from six down to four. So I wanted to know where the, the reading, where it was extended the most was. So I played around in this area and I found out that right here uh, was a minus 0 .007, seven thousandths of an inch. And now same thing on this side, I was plus 13 here, uh, but then I was 19 here and 19 here. And so I moved it around quite a bit in this area to find the point where I had the highest plus number, and that was right here, plus uh, 20 thousandths. And notice the highest plus number is straight across from the highest n minus number. Now, a plus means that the plunger is pushing this way, and a minus means that the plunger is pushing this way. That means that the entire opening is offset from the center line 27 thousandths of an inch from this point, or I, I should say the total total indication um, is a plus 20 here and a, and a minus 7 here for a total of 27 thousandths. But um, if I were to move, so that means that the entire bell housing is this way, 27 thousandths. But if I were to move it back 27 thousandths, um, that means I'm going to be offset in the opposite direction. Um, these are total numbers, and in order to get it in the middle between the total, I have to divide that in half. And so I've got my plus 20 and my minus 7 over here for a total of 27 thousandths. That means in order to get the alignment perfect, I would have to move it in that direction half of the amount. So half of uh, 27 is uh, 13 and a half thousandths. Um, now they sell aftermarket offset bushings that you can use. You remove the, the dowels um, from the block and you replace them with offset. And the typical um, offsets that are available are seven thousandths, fourteen thousandths, and twenty-one thousandths. So in order to get this bell housing perfectly centered, I would need to go in this direction, thirteen and a half thousandths. Uh, if I were to use a seven thousandths bushing, I would still be out of alignment by six and a half thousandths. Um, Tremec, uh, in order for them to warranty a transmission, uh, will not uh, honor that warranty if your alignment is any greater than five thousandths. So the goal is to get it within five thousandths um, uh, or less. Um, out of center line. And so moving at seven thousandths isn't quite enough. Now, thirteen and a half thousandths out, if I use a fourteen thousandths bushing, it's going to move me a half thousandths in the other direction, but then I would only be out of tolerance half a thousandth, which is well within 
the five thousandths tolerance. It's as close to perfect, I think, as you could possibly get. Um, notice at this point here, at the nine o'clock, it's thirteen thousandths. Divide that by two, that's six and a half thousandths. Um, and so in order to get that six and a half thousandths within tolerance of five, I have to move in this direction by one and a half thousandths. Well, um, notice the, the area of greatest angle is uh, on a clock face, one o'clock through seven o'clock. And if I move the bell housing this way, I'm also moving it that way. And so in all likelihood, in moving the bell housing 14 thousandths this way, I will easily move it to within tolerance side to side as well. And so the next step is to remove the bell housing, remove the dowels from the block, replace them with the offset dowels, reinstall everything, and take all these measurements again. And hopefully uh, in going through that process, I'll get it to where the alignment is within tolerance for the transmission that I'm going to run behind this bell housing. And so I'm going to pause the video and, uh, and move on to the next step. So it was a bit of work, but I've got the two dowel pins that were on the back of the block, originally the factory ones, removed. And I replaced them with 14 thousandths offset bushings that I got from QuickTime. The original offset dowels on this early 289 are pretty small in diameter. They're just under 3 eighths of an inch. They measure 0.360 which I think is right about 23 64 of an inch, so a little less than 3 eighths of an inch. Um, the five bolt 289, or the five bolt small blocks, 302s and 351s, um, basically anything with the six bolt bell housing pattern, has a much larger dowel pin, they're half inch. So um, there's only a couple places I could get the smaller diameter dowel pins from uh, for uh, this early. 289 block, uh, but I got them. I got them from QuickTime and got them installed. And now uh, they're scribbling all over the place because I've had to make several adjustments in order to get this right. Uh, but uh, in the end, what I ended up with is at the three o'clock position is uh, still my zero. Uh, directly across uh, from that, um, the dial indicator read a minus 0 .001, uh, meaning the bell housing overall is that way um, only one half of a thousandth, uh, so one half of a thousandth. Uh, and with the tolerance being five thousandths, that is well within. Um, looking at diagonally um, top right to bottom left, which would be, I don't know, like uh, one o'clock to seven o'clock ish. Um, in the top side here, I've got a plus uh, 0 0.005. And then in the bottom here, I've got a minus 0 0.003. What that tells me is that the bell housing is this way. Um, eight thousandths of an inch in total, half of that uh, is, is how much it's offset, which is 0 0.004, well within the tolerance of 0 0.05. Uh, from the 12 to 6 o'clock, uh, at the top, I've got five thousandths, a plus five thousandths. At the bottom, I've got a minus four thousandths. That tells me that the bell housing is down um, nine thousandths of an inch. Um, center line uh, is four and a half thousandths, uh, close to the tolerance of five, but still below it. And then finally, the upper left to lower right, uh, so say like 10 to four. Um, in the upper left, I've got a plus 0 0.003. In the bottom right, I've got a um, minus 0 0.005. Um, and so that's a total of eight thousandths. Half of that is four. Uh, and so all the way around the circle, the bell housing is aligned with the center line of the crankshaft to less than five thousandths of an inch, which is well within the Tremec tolerance. And so I can remove all of my masking tape and my dial indicator 
and I can go ahead and install the clutch um, and won't have to make any further adjustments before I install the transmission and I shouldn't have anything to worry about with regard to alignment.